From Phoenix, Arizona, the Q at Catalyst Conference. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're in Phoenix, Arizona, at the Girls in Tech uh, Catalyst Conference. About 4,000, or excuse me, 400 people. Kind of a small conference. Fourth year, growing in size. Going to be back in uh, the Bay Area next year. Want to come down check it out? I always like to get you know kind of early on some of these conferences and really see what's going on. And we're really excited for our next guest, Monique Moro, the CTO of New Frontiers Engineering inside of Cisco. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So we've had a ton of Cisco guests on uh, over the years, but I've never heard the New Frontiers Engineering title. So what is New Frontiers Engineering? So New Frontiers is exactly what you think. You can imagine it's really forward thinking in terms of uh, technology and research. Uh, this combina combinatorial, uh, uh, you know, inter as, as intersection, if you will, with economics and what could be potential portfolio for the future business of the company. So that's what I look at, and it's, uh, you know, that's uh, a, a special position, I could say, because you you really want to make sure that you're not too far out uh, to your core business, and uh, you care about your core business always. Right. I was, well, was going to ask how much of it's kind of accelerating the core versus, you know, kind of greenfield. I know, you know, we've had um, some of the team from the UCS group, and, you know, it's a growing business inside of Cisco, not really kind of core what you think about in terms of just core switches and stuff. It's servers and, you know, data center infrastructure beyond just the network. Is that some of the stuff that, that you guys look at to go kind of out on new branches? Well, certainly cloud, so data centers with that is cloud computing, and then you've got mobile, and you have video. I would also say you have uh, cybersecurity, Internet of Things, very, very important business analytics. So that's core, core business. And it could be uh, accelerating what we have, but it also could be uh, creating a new business opportunity. So the modus operandi, or the modality, if you will, is not to, not to steer too uh, far away from your core. The network does count. Uh, software is going to be very, very important for us. Services, uh, absolutely important. So, you know, it's uh, really steering the ship midway in such a way that you de-risk uh, what you're doing as you look forward. If only McNeely had said the cloud is the computer, not the <laughs> network is the computer, right? So true. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to touch base uh, on your talk, changing the landscape of the digitized yes, world. Yes, yes. What was that all about? So, you know, setting the landscape, there are several uh, points that I wanted to make during that uh, presentation and really to fire up the, the audience. One is that 51% of the global population are women, and women do count. That change is extremely, ex it is exponential, probably always has been. That this is all about how do you keep your skills up at the end of the day. This is all about... Uh, it is never too late to understand what's happening out there and hear the skills buckets. So cybersecurity, analytics, uh, what you do with data, uh, mobility, collab. Collaboration is probably the 21st century currency in anything that we're going to do because we're so global. Uh, the notion of uh, what you do with uh, uh, other uh, components here, not only the Internet of Things, and with the Internet of Things you've got interesting aspects uh, with privacy and how you handle privacy, privacy engineering, privacy by design, and uh, all kinds of modality of, of cybersecurity because, you know, uh, companies and customers are very concerned about ransomware, so think about phishing attacks. And I would say that that's just the start, right, right. but you have to juxtapose that with critical thinking skills and something that we call T-skills. It's interdisciplinary skill sets that are going to be asked for in this century, uh, along with uh, intergenerational teaming. So it's not just about working with millennials, but it's about working with people who've been in the business. It's the power of the end here, and that's really, really the focus. So we're going to run out of time way too early. I already know this, but uh, there's so many things you just touched on. But, but specifically, back to your skills comment, what's interesting is as the technology is changing so fast. It's the new skills that are the kind of the driving new programming language, um, that almost, you're almost at an advantage if you don't kind of have the legacy behind you because everyone is learning all these new languages and these new ways to do things that didn't exist just a short time ago. Well, coding is fundamental. I think that coding is going to be fundamental, but you can learn new programming languages if you learn at least the fundamentals of coding. What's really, really important is to be able to pivot your skill sets in such a way that you are keeping up with it. It's never, ever too late. Once you have uh, a knowledge of a particular language, 
research or a knowledge of a particular algorithm or a way something works, you're going to be able to learn anything. My message was it's never too late. You can start to, to learn now. Right. So that's, that's really important. And then the other piece on the T-skills, again, the IoT is just a, a giant bundle that we could jump into for a long time. Yeah. But you know, as the machines start to take more and more of the, of the low-level work and increasingly the mid-level and, and the higher level, it is incumbent on a person to really start to bring some context, bring some relative scale, bring you know, a lot of, of softer skills to help influence that activity in the correct way. Interdisciplinary skills are the ask for, uh, for the 21st century. So for example, I was just at the School of, uh, Strate I was actually on a strategic advisory board for the School of Computer Science at a particular university here in the United States. And one of the asks was, not only have the skill set of computer science, but oh, by the way, go take an improvisational class at the School of Fine Arts. So to have the ability to communicate, because communication skills are the number one skills that companies and enterprises are looking for. So interdisciplinary skills, big currency for the 21st century. Well, that's interesting, because I wonder how, how aggressively that communications message is weaved into kind of your classic STEM conversation. They are, they, well, they, uh, they are very much weaved into the classic STEM, com and I would say it's STEAM because you have to put A for art there. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> so to the classic Thanks. conversation, uh, you can be a savant in, in a particular uh, science, but if you don't have the ability, and this is with enterprises uh, essentially, to communicate and to be able to work in teams, it's going to be a dead end for you to come into the enterprise. So it's really, really important to have those skill sets. Yeah. So I want to shift gears a little bit, because sure. um, not only do you have your day job at, at Cisco, yeah. but you're involved in a lot of kind of advocacy. Yes. Um, so so uh, tell the audience some of the work that you're doing there. Yes. I mean, so one of the areas that I really care about is advocating for women and women creating technology, uh, women who were actually in technology. So there's also the UN component of that. Uh, I think that's a very, very important tech policy component for it. The UN Women's Organization receives the lowest budget of all of the UN. So getting more, remember the context, 51% of the world's population are women, and so we have to go up and down and across the pyramids, and so we need that. That's the level of advocacy that um, I'm involved in, not only from a company and an industry perspective, but also from uh, a UN-related uh, perspective and a standard-setting perspective, because uh, it is about the power of the end, and our ultimate goal is to ha achieve uh, gender neutrality, I think, at the end of the day. And recall one thing is that there are 17 UN sustainable do uh, goals that were uh, consented and, and approved, really, by the United Nations this past September. Number one is ending poverty. Number five is achieving gender equality. It's just those. There's such big. There's such big problems. You just you know you look at 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 at, uh, at hunger. Yes. Um, and it just seems this continual battle to try to to make improvement, make improvement, make improvement. And yet we're we continue to be surrounded, probably within blocks of where we're sitting now, with with people that are not getting enough enough to eat. So how does you know education compare to that, or how tightly are they intertwined? And then within education, is 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 steam, you know. A leading edge is STEAM, you know, kind of a way to, to, to break through and, and get more education. How does STEAM fit within the, within the education broader? Oh, well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's all I intertwined. I told you we weren't going to have it, enough time. It, yeah, like. so it's, all, <laughs> it's really all intertwined at, uh, at the end of the day. It's, how, it's what is taught at what age uh, group. It depends on where you, whether you're in a developing com, uh, country or a developed country. So uh, we're, you know, in the United States advocating and in most of uh, other countries advocating that uh, technology STEAM be really uh, taught at a very early age, you know, uh, primary school. If you get uh, skill sets um, uh, uh, really broadened and developed at an early age, you also develop the capacity to actually be able to work you, or to be able to create and to be able to, to add to your, your household. And if you're in a village, to be able to do some very creative things too because of, of what you're d dealing with. So think about uh, connecting. Here's the bigger problem that we as an industry want to solve. That is connecting one to two billion people on the internet. 
in the next uh, several years, and they're not going to be in North America, and they're not going to be in Europe. They're going to be in Africa. They're going to be in other countries of the world, and so we need to think creatively, working with people on the ground, learning from them, and not being techno, what, what, what was told to me, not to be techno-colonialist at the same time, <laughs> because there's some very interesting solutions that are coming out of the countries that we could actually tap in on. Right. And just to wrap, not that you don't have enough to do in your day <laughs> job or your global advocacy, but you're also a very prolific writer. <laughs> yes, I'm, a, well, a prolific writer, and I'm, I, I'm so proud to have co-authored three books this year. Uh, one that is already out is uh, Disrupting Unemployment. Uh, the other uh, two will be out in June, uh, which is InterCloud, Cloud uh, Interoperability, uh, with uh, uh, three other co-authors. And the third book, which I'm most, uh, also most proud of, is The Internet of Women, uh, Accelerating, Culture, uh, Excel Accelerating Cultural Change, and that will be out on June 30th of this year. You're a busy lady. Busy. <laughs> All right. Well, Monique, thanks for taking Thank a few you. minutes out of your busy day. You Thank probably you. could have written another couple chapters in the <laughs> 20 minutes that we've had together. Uh, I really appreciate the time. I look forward to really kind of looking for where your guys' imprint starts coming out of the Cisco uh, machine on sure. the back end with the product. So thank you very much and, you. and for all your work. Well, it's, it's a pleasure being here. Absolutely. Jeff Frick here at the Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks for watching.